Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to another episode of the Michelle Fondant Author Vlog. I believe this is episode three. I'm here today to talk to you about my experience of a spiritual awakening when I was married. And this is an interesting story if you've never heard it because I know a lot of you have had major spiritual awakenings while you're married and it's not a fun time. So I'm gonna tell you my story. So if you're interested, do stay tuned. Today, we're going to present three books that are related to this topic. The first book is Twin Flame Romance, The Journey to Unconditional Love. The second book is Twin Flame Union, The Seven Keys to a Healthy Twin Flame Journey. And the third book, which really this video is mostly about the empowered divine feminine becoming an unstoppable woman in the 21st century and beyond. If you are new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. And thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I do tarot and astrology readings. Hey, check out my new channel, Transcendent Astrology and Tarot as well and i have my new video up there the first the very 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 first long length video on the full moon in libra that's happening on march 25th which is also a lunar eclipse so do check that out i'm here with my brand new brand spanking new grogu tumbler do you see it you know the other one was falling apart for about a year. And do you see that steam coming off the top? I've got my Ticino Dandelion Caramel Nut Tea. I'm gonna take a sip right now. It may be too hot. I'm losing my voice. I'm fighting off a bit of a cold or flu, or I don't know what it is, but my body's fighting it off. So you may hear my voice being a little hoarse. Take a lot of sip. I might have to drink more tea than usual during these videos. I've got Grogu, my pad of one. Right there, I've got my new mascot along with Grogu. They are friends, in case you're wondering. They are friends. I've got Gudetama, which is an egg. Someone said last time I was talking about obesity and the epidemic of obesity and people being overweight in this country contributing to so many lifestyle diseases. And somebody said, oh, it's funny that your new mascot is obese. And I'm like, no, he's an egg. He's an egg, you guys. Gudetama is an egg. That's why he looks all fluffy. So that is my new mascot along with Grogu. And let's get started talking about this topic. So many of my clients that I coach through specifically through the twin flame journey are married. They're still married or they were married when they met a twin flame or they were married when simply they were going through a major, major spiritual awakening. Let's backtrack and I'll tell you my story of my personal spiritual awakenings because it's an interesting trajectory. I had my first major, major, major spiritual awakening when I was 17 through age 19. When I say 17 through 19, it's because a lot of changes took place during that time period. A lot, a lot of major changes. So when I was 17, turning 18, I met a mentor slash boyfriend who was eight years older than me, who was a major influence on my life. He introduced me to vegetarianism, Zen Buddhist thinking, meditation, yoga, uh, Eastern philosophy and thought and the Kama Sutra among many, many, many other teachings. And at that particular time, due to that relationship and this awakening, I left my mother's house where I was living and I went to go live with my dad, which was a major move for me. And during that time, I also left, at the end of that awakening, I left to go live in France. So a lot of things happened in a very 
minuscule compact time during that first major, major awakening between age, ages 17 and 19. So that was my first. My second major spiritual awakening happened between 1999 and I would say 2001 to 2002. So that was like this enormous chunk of time where everything was changing for me. So some of you know, through my published books that I experienced a health challenge, a major health challenge at that time. I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer at age 28. And while that is not life-threatening in and of itself, it threw me for a loop because I was 28 and I had two kids at the time. And my youngest at the time, I have three now, but my youngest at the time was only about a year, a little shy of a year and a half years old when I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. So you can imagine the distress that I was under during that specific time. During that time, I discovered alternative medicine. I studied Ayurveda. I studied more Eastern thought. Because if you think about it, there was like a delay of about nine years between the time I was 19 and the time that I was diagnosed with thyroid cancer at age 28, where I began another search into the meaning of life, spirituality, alternative health, mind-body health. And that happened ages 28 through about 29 to 30. And then it went quiet for about a year. And then again, <laughs> geez, oh, Pete's. And then between 2003 and about 2006, I went through another major push, a major, major spiritual awakening. Oh my God. So maybe this was like, yeah, this was the third, I guess, in a way it was the third. And then I've gone through four because another one was in 2018 when I met my twin flame. Oh my goodness, you guys. So crazy, right? So during the time where I had those two spiritual awakenings, I would say between the ages of 28 and 35, 36, there was a period of rest, if you will, in between that. But during that time, I was married. I was married and I had children. Now, let me tell you my mentality about marriage and my mentality about marital relationships at that time. I felt at the time, because I had divorced parents, I felt that when you get married, you never get divorced. And the reason I had that paradigm was because I didn't like the fact that my parents were divorced. I pretended that I liked it, but of course I didn't like it because I felt that families should be together, kids should be together with their parents. I did not like seeing my parents fighting. I saw them fighting in their marriage. I was very, very, very young and I do write about it in the Empowered Divine Feminine. So pick up a copy of that book in any format. I do tell that story about my early childhood. I didn't like the idea of divorce. I felt that if I were to get married, it would be forever. So that was my first limiting notion on marriage is that you get married, it's forever. Divorce is never an option. So that is the paradigm that I actually set out for myself. The second rule or paradigm that I held for myself about marriage had to do with the marital relationship itself. Because I didn't have a lot of examples of marital relationships that were either together or successful or both, I looked to the traditional model of, for example, my grandparents. My grandparents were married until they both died. And they liked each other, but they didn't like each other, if you will. You could tell there was some kind of teasing or banter going on between them, but they lived in separate bedrooms. They tolerated each other. They didn't really like each other and they held very, very traditional roles. So my grandma never worked. She raised children. She was in the kitchen. She cooked, she cleaned and took care of the kids. And my grandfather went to work. 
and then didn't do anything else, if you will. So I really felt that that was how a marriage and a marital relationship was supposed to be. I figured, okay, well, the honeymoon phase at the beginning will wear off. It will wear off and what you're left with is tolerating this person. Like it's normal to grow apart. It's normal to maybe sleep in separate bedrooms. It was normal not to really like your spouse, but to feel obligated to them because you made this commitment. I remember saying to my sister-in-law at the time that she was getting engaged to my brother-in-law. And I remember saying to her like, oh yeah, it'll come a time where you just don't want to sleep in the same bed with your husband or you don't want them touching you during the night. And she looked at me like I was insane. And she said, oh, that will never happen. What are you talking about? That will absolutely never happen. And fast forward, they are now divorced. <laughs> but I think it was just my paradigm was that you grow apart when you're married. That's just what happens. But if you're committed to the person, you stay in the relationship. So if you think about my paradigm was that A, you don't get divorced, B, you grow apart, C, you still stay in the relationship, even though you grow apart, you can see I had set myself up for a lifetime of unhappiness, <laughs> major, major unhappiness. Now, there's another thing that you don't know about my marriage is that after working for a few years, because I got pregnant in college, you guys, I didn't have a straight forward career path. And I always thought that once I had kids, I would wanna stay home with my kids. So I taught in a middle and high school for a few years, even while I had a child. And then I had a second child and then I got sick. And then I took some time off from working. And then I was so unhappy with my marriage, couldn't figure out why. And so I thought it was because I didn't have a career. So I went back to teaching school and that's when I got pregnant with my third child. And then after the third child is when I stopped working altogether. I was 100% financially tied to my husband. And I was 100% dependent on him for everything, for living, for life, for paying the bills, for having food, for having shelter. And I was raising three children. So you can imagine the vulnerability that I was feeling because at the time that I was going through these spiritual awakenings, I had so many fears, so many fears. Not to mention, my husband had made it pretty clear that I really couldn't do anything right except for mothering. It was like every time I would tell him about something I wanted to do, he would laugh it off or not take it seriously or think that I couldn't do it and really made me believe that I couldn't do it. In fact, when I was pregnant with my third and I took prenatal yoga, I told him, hey, you know what? I think I might want to teach prenatal yoga because this really helped me in my pregnancy. So I would like to help and inspire other women during their pregnancy. And he looked at me and laughed and said, I can never imagine you being a yoga teacher. Now, fast forward a few years from that comment and I owned my own yoga studio for 10 years and I taught prenatal yoga for those 10 years. He wasn't super supportive in my hopes and dreams and I was 100% dependent on him. So I was 100% dependent on him for living. I have these three children and I was living a pretty good life, meaning I had a house, I had a car, I had food on the table, money in the bank but I was so, so incredibly unhappy. And I dismissed it as the thought of, this is just how marriage is. This is just how marriage is. After the honeymoon phase, which we didn't even really have a funny honeymoon phase, but after the honeymoon phase, it wears off and you just don't like each other very much. You just tolerate each other. It's a commitment. It's not 
all happiness. But I was so incredibly unhappy, but I kept stifling it and stuffing it down and pushing those thoughts away. So let's go back to that first spiritual awakening while I was married. One of the things that I did not accept when I had the diagnosis of thyroid cancer is I did not accept that it happened by chance. I did not accept the fact that they said, oh, sometimes these things just happen. I did not buy into that. I said, things always happen for a reason. There's always a root cause. There's always a genesis for the why. Now, of course, I had studied some yoga when I was 18 and 19 years old, but I didn't have a basis for yoga philosophy. So I really didn't know. And certainly I didn't really even know about the chakra system at that time. I began to dig deep into research. I went to the library and I took out a ton of books on alternative medicine, mind, body, health. And I came upon this little passage in the book, Women's Bodies, Women's Wisdom by Christiane Northrup, who is a medical doctor. And it was on the chakra system. And I realized that I had been sick in my throat area, the throat chakra, my entire life. And the culmination of that was the thyroid cancer. I began to connect the dots, connect the pieces about not having a voice, about not being able to speak my truth, about not being able to express myself authentically. Then I had to dig even deeper into the fact that the biggest wound, apart from the wounds from my mother, which were really apparent, I just didn't want to work through them. I didn't know how to work through them in reality, was the fact that I hated my marriage. I hated it so much. I was so unhappy in my marriage. I felt I had lost my identity 100% completely. And while I loved staying at home with my kids, while I loved being a mom, I loved being able to be a homemaker on some level. I was so incredibly miserable in my marriage and that scared me to no end. I was talking with a client the other day who was talking about meeting a twin flame while she's married. And she said, what kind of sick joke is God playing on me? What kind of sick joke? is God playing on me? This is horrible. Why would I have this experience? I'm married. I can't get out of this marriage. I don't know how to get out of this marriage. I don't know what to do. If you think about it, for me personally, I wasn't meeting a twin flame while I was married. I got sick and that caused my awakening, but it wasn't a third party. It had nothing to do with a third party. But I still, because of the spiritual awakening, I still really had to face the fact that I was really, really unhappy. And the root cause of that unhappiness was my marriage. And it was the fact that I didn't like the person I was with. I didn't like being married to the person I was with and that I felt trapped. And I lost myself in the process. And that was it, this humongous realization and this weight on my shoulders that said, what do I do now? I need to be responsible. I have three children to look after. I need to be responsible. I could never make ends meet on my own. How would I do it? I have no money. I have no money. I have no career. I have no job. I don't even know what job I would go to that would pay me adequately for being able to live because certainly teaching was not going to do it. We lived in a very expensive area. I pushed it away, I pushed it away, I pushed it away. At some point in the process, about a year into it, a year and a half into it, I told my husband, I don't wanna be in this marriage anymore. And he, there was major pushback, major, major, major pushback. And we went to marriage counseling and tried to work through it and all this. So I decided, that it was best, and it was through family pressure, I decided that it was best to just shut my mouth, stick with the marriage, and count my blessings. The fact is, my mother even said, you've got the three children, 
he is a good provider and he's a father and you've got it good. And I was like, okay, I'll shut my mouth. I won't say anything. I'll stay in the marriage. And then once I was pregnant, this is maybe a year later, <laughs> after I decided to shut my mouth and stick with it, when I was pregnant with my third is when I had that third major spiritual awakening where there was something growing inside of me that wouldn't shut up. And it was like, there's something more to your life. There's something more, there's something more, there's something more. Because I was still feeling this low level depression and unease and not knowing who I was. And that is when I was introduced to my mentors and teachers, Dr. Deepak Chopra and Dr. Wayne Dyer. And I began to consume all of their books like a voracious animal <laughs> consuming their books. And this was really before the internet. It was before YouTube. I mean, the internet was in its infancy, if you will, but it was definitely before YouTube. So there wasn't a lot of material other than audio tapes audio CDs and books. And that is what I consumed. I actually took out an audio tape, cassette tape, yes, a cassette tape of, it was a series from Wayne Dyer based on his book, Manifesting Your Destiny or How to Manifest Your Destiny. And I took it out of the library and I kept renewing it. And I must have listened to that thing a hundred times because I couldn't get enough of it. I just, there was something inside of me that was screaming to come out and I didn't understand what was happening to me. That spiritual awakening while I was married, even though I kept pushing it away, took about two and a half years until I had had enough. And I said, I need to get the heck out of this marriage because I cannot live a lie anymore because it came to the point where I felt like I was living a lie. I was disingenuous to myself. I was lying to myself. I was disingenuous to myself. I was staying in a situation based on fear and major fears. And if you're going through something similar, you're probably thinking, yes, those fears are valid. If you're a stay at home mom and you're like, how am I gonna make money? Where's the money gonna come from? How am I gonna move out and get my own place? What's gonna happen with the kids? I don't wanna share time with my ex with my kids. How am I going to be able to survive and thrive? And what is my family going to think? There were so many things and like I had all of the odds against me. All of the odds against me. And if you want to learn more about all of those odds against me, it is in this book. It is in this book. I give the details on why all of the odds were against me. All the odds were against me. I was terrified. I was terrified because all of the odds being against me. My whole family was even against me. Like it really sucked. I pushed forward not knowing what was going to happen because I knew I could not spend another day of my life living inauthentically. I couldn't spend another day of my life shutting my mouth and just taking it because it was a choice that I had made 10 to 15 years before that. I made the decision to have the baby. I did make the decision to get married, but I felt like I didn't need to continue to pay for that decision well into my late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. I figured I would be well dead before <laughs> that even happened because I probably would have died of depression or something. I said, I can't live inauthentically anymore. If you are going through a spiritual awakening and you're married, it's not happening to punish you. It's not happening because God hates you. It's not happening because it's God's cruel joke for you. 
And whether it's happening because it's an awakening or whether it's happening because it's a twin flame or a soulmate or a third party situation, it's happening because your soul is trying to pull you on the highest path that you need to be on for your soul's evolution. It's not happening to torture you, even though it feels like torture. Now I'm here today, it's 2024. That whole separation period that took between 2006, I finally was able to get fully separated in 2008. And then the divorce was final in 2009. So it has been some time and I am alive today. I'm alive and kicking and I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> I'm doing much better, much, 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 much better than I would have had I stayed in a marriage I did not want to be in, had I stayed with a person I didn't want, want to stay with, had I been inauthentic toward myself and squashed my destiny, squashed my own desires, squashed my needs, that would have been catastrophic. I don't even want to see that future because that future would have been completely and utterly catastrophic. And that future is not a future I ever wanted to live. I hope this really helps you to realize that if you're married, you're going through a spiritual awakening, that it's not the end of the world. It's the beginning of your world. It truly is the beginning of your world. Decisions will need to be made. Now, not all decisions end in divorce or separation. Some of those decisions could be that you transform and grow and move into the person that your soul wants you to move into. And if your spouse is okay with it, then it might mean that you guys stay together, right? It doesn't mean you have to separate or divorce, but it could be that because of the soul's path that you need to embark upon in order to feel that you are aligned and authentic with yourself, it could be that you do need to move through a separation and or divorce. And that's not you being punished. So you need to know that. You need, really need to understand that. In all honesty, because it had been building for so long for me, when I really awakened, awakened in my marriage at age 28, and by the time finally I was able to tell him I was done 100% completely, a lot of time had passed, right? 2008 was the final separation. In 1999 was when I had the realization that I needed a separation. And I tried once. It didn't stick. I tried once. But many years had passed in between those stages of awakening. So it certainly didn't happen overnight for me. But I knew. I kept trying, if you will. My soul kept trying. My soul was like, you're not there yet. We'll give you another awakening. <laughs> You're not there yet. We'll give you more signs. But it finally stuck. And I will tell you that the day that I was stepping out on my own with my kids and my cats and saying goodbye to my husband was seriously one of the best days of my life. And that sounds sad, but it was because I felt so empowered. I felt so empowered in myself that I finally was able to make that decision with all the odds against me, with all the people against me, with all the circumstances against me, without even knowing what my future would hold, without knowing if any future endeavor or career path would even be remotely successful. I had no idea, but I knew I was free. I knew I had freed myself and I knew that I could only live from my authentic self and authentic truth. And that was the only thing that was real. So I hope this helps to inspire you a little bit if you are in a similar situation. I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. 
click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this with others who might be going through a spiritual awakening. Thank you so much for your support of my YouTube channel. You can buy one of my 11 published books. You can book a reading with me. I do both tarot and astrology readings. And I'll see you in the next video.